Hi everyone, I'm Koya Karasova. I am the Kingdom Social Media Officer, and today I am here with my dear friend. Hi everybody, I am Maestro Orazio, and I am the Kingdom Hospitler. Yeah, and today we're going to be talking about a uh, demo that happens every year, um, the Sherwood Forest Fair demo, I believe. Um, Orazio, can you tell us about that? Yeah, I'd love to. So the Sherwood Forest Fair is a medieval fair that happens in McDade, Texas, which is just outside of Bastrop, you know, 45 minutes south or east southeast of Austin. And uh, Bringolod has been doing a demo at the Sherwood Forest Fair for about three years now, you know, a little bit of a break for the pandemic. Um, but yeah, it is an eight week long demo. So every weekend that the Sherwood Forest Fair is open, Bring mm -hmm. is there. Um, and, you know, as we've continued to do that demo, have really tried to expand it out to uh, the entire kingdom because we get people from all over Texas and all over the country that come to this fair um and have been able to pass people off uh to groups all across Onstiora and the known world from our contacts there oh that's that's awesome that's a really long demo to be doing so that's um, <laughs> it's pretty long yeah and so is. is that just saturday and sunday or is that like the week night yeah so uh the Sherwood forest fair is saturday and sunday except mm -hmm. for the weekend the uh second weekend of um spring break where it is also open on Friday. Um, okay. And so every day that Sherwood Forest is open from cannon to cannon. So at, at 10 a.m. they shoot off the, the morning cannon. And then at sunset, uh, they shoot off the closing cannon. So as the fair goes on, the day gets a little bit longer as the sun stays up a little bit uh, longer. But that's the uh, starting the first weekend in March will first be the first weekend, weekend and then eight uh, weekends after that. Eight weekends after that, so that. Oh, sorry, end. eight weekends, including that. <laughs> including that, okay, yeah. and so that'll end around like mid to late April. Yeah, mid to late April. Okay, cool. So, um, how did the SCA get involved with uh, the the Sherwood Forest demo? Well, uh, it's really that there are some Skadians who were part of the sort of founding cast for Sherwood. So Sherwood has been going for, I think we're, we're coming up on like 15 years or so now mm -hmm. um, and really started as a, a pretty small medieval fair. So they, they are set up kind of around like the... Um, Robin Hood. It's it's the Sherwood Forest. And so it's the right. story of Robin Hood. They do a sort of day-long production throughout every single day of the fair where they're telling a story with Robin Hood and Maid Marian and uh, the sheriff, all that sort of stuff. Um, but so there were some Skadians who were kind of their first uh, in, in people who introduced them to what should the clothes look like? What should the dances look like? And really helped build up the Sherwood Forest Fair. And after several years, and it had kind of found its footing, they were able to introduce uh, several members of the local group to uh, some of the leadership and see if we could maybe come out and uh, really start with a focus on being able to display the arts and sciences that the SCA does and and how people can learn some of those skills outside of mm -hmm. the time that they're attending the fair. That's pretty awesome. Uh, that's a really cool thing. I, mean, I really like that Skadians, you know, we're all, we, we know history. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, like it's awesome that we get to uh, support a fair, a fair uh, from the very beginning, so. Yeah, awesome. absolutely. I mean, especially too, when you think about Onstiora, mm -hmm. so much of early Onstiora was people getting connected from the Texas Renaissance Fair. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And, you know, kind of SCA lost its, its connection with that fair, but as Sherwood has continued to grow, we've really wanted to make a, a point of nurturing this relationship and being able to continue to build off of it. Cause Sherwood, yeah. um, you know, has continued to grow every year. Uh, I think it was last year. Their closing, uh, their closing weekend, they had over ten thousand people through the gate. Oh um, goodness, so that's a lot. Is, yeah, 
they're, they're big weekends. There is a line of cars stretching like along the side of the highway and there's a mile and a half left of road to get to the parking lot. Um, it is, it is really getting pretty big. That's awesome. So yeah. what, um, so what is um, like the vision for the SEA um, being at Sherwood Forest, like in the long run and like making it grow? Yeah. So uh, we're, we're kind of trying to, to make sure that we don't get pulled so far in that it's like a extreme cast where it's, mm -hmm. you know, if people from the SEA want to go and help, you know, like uh, Honorable Lord Tahal has uh, become one of the advisors for the dance group and has helped them continue to refine their, their dance and, and that sort of thing. And, you know, like we said, the Skadians who are on uh, cast. And so they are sort of in character doing fully Sherwood things. And, and that's really great. And we love to have them as a connection there, but trying to keep the SCA as, as really its own demo at the fair. Mm -hmm. so, like we put up a pavilion and that's, that's where the SCA is. And so uh, while we love supporting and being a part of the overall cast, trying to make sure that, you know, it's a, it's eight weeks long yeah. both Saturday and Sunday. And so we want to make sure that, you know, when we have a harder time finding people to volunteer, you can run it with a smaller group and it's manageable. And so, okay. you know, the long-term vision, you know, we've talked to them about being able to get like a hard stand booth uh, that, you know, the we're able to to use so that people can, you know, we can store some of our demo stuff there, all that sort of thing. But really just want to make sure that we balance the amazing connections that we get to make with fairgoers with making sure that we're not over committing um, any of the populace to to the fair. Oh, yeah. I mean, we all have helium hand, but like it is always nice to uh, not be overwhelmed by our helium hand. <laughs> Right. Because we, I mean, we want, we want it to be a fun time because it's yeah. a really amazing opportunity. You know, like we said, we started with it being arts and science focused and that really where is where it still is, but they've allowed us to now set up like a little list field. And so like fighters can come out. We, we do, um, you know, fighting demonstrations. We'll do mm -hmm. classes with people if they want to come and like try and run some drills and that kind of thing. Um, and then, you know, Artisans have also started, instead of it just being static displays, last year I, over the course of several weekends, was painting a big silk banner. And so people who were coming, they were regular fairgoers, and so would kind of see the progression of the banner as it was going, and the fair That's loves that kind of work. And so, you know, like, for instance, the fair this year, they're looking at creating their own tapestry that they mm -hmm. make throughout the whole fair. And so when we can do something similar, and then during their sort of efforts, they they are really excited about that. Kind yeah, because you don't usually get that kind of opportunity with um, demos, um, other demos that you have, because it's usually just one night or one weekend. But to have that long extension uh, of, of time is pretty neat. And then when if you get people to join the SCA through the demo, they can they'll see that flag and or the banner and always know, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I know that guy. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, but, you know, even to, uh, mm -hmm. you know, do that or a lot of times people will come out and they're just doing some null binding or mm -hmm. doing drop spindle or, okay. you know, uh, some, or, you know, making loose it something that is sort of a very quick task that they can show off, but then mm -hmm. is allowing them to still interact with fair goers because that's yeah. really our focus. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's, we don't want to kind of just have it be come and do your art in the tent. Uh, right. cause it's really yeah. about, about letting people know all this cool stuff that they can be a part of and mm -hmm. letting them know that there is basically a fair where everyone's super excited and they don't have to like spend money to sit at a show year round. Um, right. yeah. it's the big pitch that, that you give at all the demos is like, yeah. would you like to do this for less money at the event we have right. a thing for you <laughs> yeah like you want to do this every weekend we got mm -hmm. you like yeah. yeah no that's awesome um so you have this opportunity every year and um you know you talk about like having artisans and fighters and stuff um how how can someone get involved and be part of that yeah so um 
the main thing is, is uh, an important thing to know is you need to sign up ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So uh, the way that it works with the fair is we have to have um, a couple people, we call them primaries at the booth at all times because they are okay. sort of considered fair staff and they are our insurance at mm -hmm. the fair. So if we don't have someone there, it, you know, we don't have our insurance coverage. So always have a primary on staff. And then anyone who volunteers is put on a will call list at gate. And okay. so if you don't sign up ahead of time, we can't get you on the will call list. Um, and so we have a sign up form um, off of the main homepage under demos and it says Sherwood Fair. Um, <laughs> and uh, if you don't want to go use the button off the homepage, Ansia.com. Uh, org slash hospitler slash Sherwood gets you to two buttons. It's the same mm -hmm. page that people who find us through Sherwood will be able to go to. And it says like, hey, did you find us at FAIR? Or like, hey, do you want to volunteer? Yeah. And so click on that volunteer button. It has a ton of useful information about what's involved and kind of some of the same stuff that we're going to cover tonight. Yeah. Um, but it also has the link to the form to sign up. Mm -hmm. um, and so every week, um, I think, Wednesday night, mm -hmm. uh, Honorable Lord Twahal and His Excellency Gavin, who are two leads for the fair, send that off to um, the fair, make sure that they have it at the gate and are able to let people in um, from the SCA. Okay, cool. So um, you said um, the, the fair leads um, were His Excellency Gavin and um, Honorable Lord Twill. 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 Everybody. Uh, a lot. Of, everybody knows him as Twill. Okay. Twill. Um, that is essentially like the event stewards for the whole eight weeks, right? Is yes. That what you mean yeah. by like? Okay. I just want to make so, sure. But but a good way to kind of think about mm -hmm. it is every primary is a deputy. So the deputy. The primaries are the ones you know. His Excellency Gavin, Honorable Lord Tohal, will not be out there every weekend because right. it burnt. We've That's done that. Yeah. We've done some years, especially the first couple where we wanted to make sure that we could control that relationship mm -hmm. where, you know, I was part of that where you're out there, you know, if not eight weeks, four weeks out of the season, five weeks. And I didn't even do the full eight. And there were some who did the full eight and I was crispy, mm. so tired. Uh, that, <laughs> and yeah. so, um, you know, you want to make sure that's still fun. Uh, mm -hmm. as part of it yeah so but yeah if you have more questions after this mm -hmm. and after visiting the homepage, there's uh there's um contact information on mm -hmm. that same uh sherwood slash volunteer page yeah. that you can use to reach out to them as well mm -hmm. yeah um yeah definitely reach out to them if you have any questions that you know we don't discuss or, or anything mm -hmm. like that yeah. Um, cause it's just, there's a whole lot of cool things that you can do with, uh, this fair, it seems like, um, what are some of the like preferred, uh, like artists, um, cause you talked about like doing drop spindle weaving, um, like what are the preferred artists, um, like things yeah, for absolutely. people to bring? So, um, to that, you know, when we're out there, we take a box of sort of like, in case of no artisans demo. Mm -hmm. right. So there are things to display mm -hmm. out there. Um, but we love when people can bring out the thing that they're really excited to talk about. Yeah. Um, in terms of like, what is cool to display? Anything you're passionate about. A thing to know is, you know, we're in the fair about 200 yards in it is mm -hmm. rough terrain and it's a field that everyone parks in mm -hmm. and you have to get your stuff in there's not like a trolley service to get that in there so like keep that in mind if you have something that's a big display right you know, yeah. I, I used to take out my scribal stuff and my scribal box is not a combat scribe box and so I kind of stopped doing scribal because it's dusty out there and mm -hmm. we're just in a pavilion and it's hard to get around. And so switch to being able to carry silk around, which is a lot easier. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, you know, that's kind of uh, a thing to keep in mind, but outside of that, um, you know, whatever you're passionate about, I have seen, you know, things 
like uh, Honorable Lady Colfina has taken out her uh, little metal punches and will do armbands and, you know, kids get really excited about being able to like punch, punch on the the little armbands. And so things yeah. that can be interactive, it doesn't have to be a make and take, but being able to kind of like get that, that hands on is a great thing to do. Um, but don't let like, oh, I'm not like a intense artisan stop you from from volunteering because right. if you want to talk to people about the SEA, it's a great opportunity. And the more people that volunteer, the more people when you're like, okay, I've talked, I've been talked out a little bit, can step back into the tent and, mm -hmm. and take a back seat. But we want people, you know, out front trying to talk to people as much as possible. That's cool. Um what would um what are the like for uh the fighter side of the demo? How does that work out? Sure. So we usually do, um, you know, like a morning and an afternoon mm -hmm. fighting demo based on how many fighters we have. Okay. And so especially if you're a fighter and you want to go, I would definitely like find a fighter buddy mm -hmm. uh, of your same style and try and together. do that together because then you know that you have somebody uh, to fight with. A fighter who just wants to come and like show off their stuff is mm -hmm. great. But a fighter oh, yeah. who is ready to go and is ready to do that kind of like demo style fighting is even better. Die pretty. Talk to the oh, crowd. Yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, um, bring but... your own largesse for <laughs> the kids. Yeah, absolutely. They love that. Yeah. Um, but so we'll do one usually like 10, 30, 11. It really depends. Once the fair has fully opened, we find out the stage next to us when their performances are going to be. Um, because we want to be really respectful of the other performers who are around us and make sure that when we're being loud, we're not yelling over, you know, the, the performer who's been working really hard and is working for tips at the fair. And so yes. we, we got to keep those relationships good. Yeah. Um, and then the afternoon is kind of right off the bat. Mm -hmm. So our changeover for the shifts, um, is right after, um, the parade which right after this we can kind of talk about like what's a day at the fair look like yeah um but so right after that at the beginning of the afternoon shift is when we usually have our our afternoon demo and then if people are up for it things at the fair start to kind of wind down towards the end of the day four five six and uh is always a great time to be able to go back out there and and make some more noise when people are doing their last sort of meander through fair nice that's cool. So you talked about uh, like the the parade. So what is the day like a day at the um, at, at the fair? fair? You say that like there's a um, a cannon that starts the day out. Then what? Happens right. Absolutely. To that? So um, so for context, you know, we break up the day at the fair into a morning shift and an afternoon shift okay. because while you are welcome to volunteer the entire day, and that's great. Uh, one of the great things about volunteering at the fair is you get in for free. Oh, and yeah. so if you want to go volunteer for the day, if you want to volunteer for the weekend and you take a couple shifts, those other shifts, go have fun at the fair. Um, turkey so, leg. Yeah, eat a turkey leg. Um, <laughs> go watch the washerwomen. We can talk mm -hmm. about some of the performers in a little bit. Uh, but so, yeah, at 10 o'clock, the, the cannon goes off. All of the main staff are at the gate and they're greeting patrons and patrons come streaming in. Um, and the morning is kind of a lot more just general talking with people at the fair. Uh, there are several performances that happen next to us in the morning. So kind of more of the opportunity to just chit chat with people. Yes. And then around uh, noon uh, mm -hmm. is when the cast does their main performance up at the castle. So it's a big hill uh, for the fair. And at the top, there's a big castle. Um, and they do a big performance out in the front. They do their dance set. And then once they finish that, there's a parade that um, a, pretty much everyone who has a booth is expected to march in. And okay. so the SCA takes our main sign and at least two people, sometimes more, go up and smile and wave at the crowd. And if you're up for, you know vamping and, and making jokes with the crowd or telling yeah. bad puns that are not so SCA specific that you need to be in the SCA to understand them. That's great. Um, yeah. But otherwise, you know, come see the SCA or by the, the stone circle. Um, but so it kind of goes down the hill and ends at the stone circle, which is right next to our booth. Um, oh, perfect. 
Yeah, it's really great. And so they do kind of afternoon announcements and mm-hmm. groups are able to say like, come see the kids show at two o'clock and the, um, you know, the such and such group is doing a performance at three. Um, and so right after that, we have our fighters not go up in the um, parade unless they're already in armor. Oh yeah. Um, so can- because right after that, we try and start making noise to pull anyone who stopped at the stone circle to come see us fight. Um, and so that's kind of the, the handoff that happens. And it's about one thirty. the official handoff happens at two. So okay. the morning shift's a little bit longer, but the afternoon shift, since it kind of pushes into the evening uh, as the as the days go on, right. um, we make sure that, that that afternoon shift starts at one so that we have that hour handoff mm-hmm. and we're not, you know, if someone's running a little bit late, uh, we're not stuck. Um, right. But so, yeah, and there's there's a ton of shows that happen all throughout the day. Most of the performers have performances multiple times in the day. Um, so if there's like, I really want to see so-and-so, you're going to have an opportunity no matter which shift you take. Oh, nice. So, That's- and then uh, an important thing to note is if you're on morning shift, that includes setup. So it's not be there at 10, it is be there at 9 have not only the stuff that's in the pavilion, but your stuff set up, Mm -hmm. fully in garb, have your hat on, um, because one of the things is the fair tells, uh, or has a shorthand for who's on staff by you have Mm -hmm. some sort of headgear on. So coif, a hat, uh, you know, a wrap, a circlet, something. Right, Right. Uh, yeah. Say, I'm a little bit more put together and I'm supposed to be on staff. Yeah. So, and they encourage kind of that 12th century English, but mm-hmm. come in whatever looks great. Uh, okay. and you really enjoy Would like it. a flower crown work or, you know. It would work, but they kind of hold us in the SEA a little bit higher, to a higher standard of oh, like. We, we are should, a historical reading. We should look historical, exactly. Yeah. Um, okay. And so uh, what actually another thing is they really do care about especially if you're marching in the parade Mm -hmm. footwear and so you gotta have period looking shoes Mm -hmm. i'll frequently you know i wear like my my suede slip-ons but they're fully black and you can't really tell but they the the fair staff will like walk down the line and compliment people's boots uh when you're standing in line for for the parade (laughs) because they want everyone to look really good yeah that's understandable especially if we're being considered like staff um Mm -hmm. so to speak um, but it's also good to know that it's just period passable, not like they have to be period shoes. Oh yeah. Like yeah. They, they're not going to come up and like, look at your, your seams or anything. It's <laughs> you have the right look. Yeah. They're not laurels is what I'm hearing. I was going to say they're not going to laurel handshake, but you know, I don't want to, I don't want to okay. get, get slapped around. I'll say it for you. That's thank you. You're welcome. So there's, there's requirements, there's a lot of work, um, and you kind of touched on it here and there, but what are like the big benefits of volunteering? You get in free, um, you get to see shows and meet a bunch of people and hang out with your friends if mm-hmm. you sign up for the SIFT together. Yeah. But what else is there? Well, and that's also, you know, I've gotten to meet people uh, mm-hmm. where you know, there were some newcomers who came out and signed up and it was a great way to meet people who were new. It was a great way mm-hmm. to meet people who were not in Bringlewood and just, you know, it's a, it's a good opportunity to get to know people that you, that you don't know. Um, and, you know, like I said, the shows are really impressive. They have their own joust that they do. Uh, there is uh, an archery competition that happens every single day, um, which it there's, mo- there's, multiple parts in it and so it's really not something that you can do while you're volunteering but if you go for a weekend Mm -hmm. and then you know do volunteer one day uh then you would have to pay for the second day to get in because you won't be on the will call list but you would be able to then go shoot in the tournament already at the fair um and then you know it's it's really just you know it's the full fair experience and so on your shift where you're not there uh there are so many different shows i i have one in particular that i just i cannot 
uh, recommend enough called Opal and Jade. Uh, so I go to their show every single time I can. They are absolutely hilarious. They do sort oh. of, a, uh, you know, both their own songs, but also interactive sing-along stuff. And, oh, so fun. And, it's, and it's it's so much fun. I die laughing every time. Um, so it's, you know, whatever kind of stuff you want, Volgamut is usually there. Uh, Master Avatar is playing. So if you're looking for like oh. something pretty, pretty historical, it's going to be there as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, you get the opportunity to see all the different vendors, um, mm -hmm. which for the most part, there's not a whole lot of crossover. You know, uh, if you go to TRF, it's like, oh, there's some Sandler and I'm going to see them at Gulf Wars. A lot of these vendors I don't see um, at SCA events. And so it's kind of a, a cool opportunity to see some slightly different stuff. Last year, I got some portable holes from the blacksmith there. Oh, awesome. Um, so so what I'm hearing is that you can go he, go to this demo and get stuff that not every Skadian also will be able to buy. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Like that. You know, you gotta you gotta you gotta dig because yeah. it's always it's always you know find the best it's, deal. Yeah. But you gotta do that if you're at Midnight Madness. So exactly. Yeah. You know, anytime the shop is a good time to shop. Mm -hmm. Um so if I were to come down and demo or, you know, be a volunteer at the demo. How, um, how would I be able to do that? Like, especially if I wanted to do the whole weekend, is there like, um, someone who coordinates crash space or, um, like camping or something like that? Right. So one, yes, there's camping at the Sherwood Forest Fair. Um, the camping is an additional charge. Um, mm -hmm. But as long as you sort of like have your ticket, and so we're, we work on making sure that they have the will call list as well, mm -hmm. then it's an additional uh, $10 to camp. So okay. really, really reasonable. Like an event that you would yeah. go to anyway. I mean, it's okay. less than most events. Yeah. Um, but uh, we do have um, one member of the local group who's in a clan. So one thing that might be a little bit different is Sherwood's camping is very sort of like clan focused. So there's a lot of big groups where it's reserved and then they have some general camping. Okay. Um, if you let them know ahead of time. So if you like look and uh, say, Hey, I want to go to the first weekend in April and reach out mm -hmm. to the fair coordinators, they can get you in contact with the lead and be like, Hey, here's a spot in their clan. Oh, cool. space. Okay, um, yeah. If not, there is general camping. And so you just kind of go and find a spot. Mm -hmm. They're open, they're available. And, you know, luckily it's all uh, East Texas pine. So it's easy to get your steaks oh, yeah. in, uh, oh, you know, sandy soil. Um, but it's a ton of fun. The first weekend I ever camped at fair, one of the clans threw a rave. Like no, oh. no kidding. There was a forty-foot stage system and oh. a bunch of flashing lights. And they were passing out like glow sticks, and I had so much fun. Uh, but you know, some nights are also really, really chill, and mm -hmm. they make a point to you know, like the clan spaces are kind of set away. So if you just mm -hmm. want to chill in camp, you can just chill in camp. Okay, cool, cool. No, that really makes it um, even more more likely for me to show up if there's you know space for me to you know set up my tent and stuff so that's yeah absolutely that helps lady, yeah. lady elizabeth uh who's the the uh member who kind of has her her own clan that she camps mm -hmm. with is just she's such a wonderful lady and so i know you'll have a good time if you if you get to camp with her so. nice all right cool um so to go back a little bit um, to rediscuss, like getting involved as a volunteer, um, can like you if can you bring like your kid with you um, and have them volunteer with like or or you know like a seventeen year old? Yeah, it pretty much like minors allowed to volunteer with the um, Sherwood Forest. So, like, how would that go about? Yeah, so, you know, since it's on will call list, mm -hmm. uh, they are, they're able to come volunteer. It would be kind of the same rules that you would follow for the SCA. No one at the um, booth is going to be responsible for your child. We're not going to do right. uh, any sort of like children's activities at the fair. It, it is 
if your kid that can is get overwhelming if, fast. If your kid is volunteering, you and your kid are volunteering and attached at the hip. Um, yeah. So you know, don't let yeah, that let's... stop you. And and really, like, your kid needs to be of an age that they are a part of the demo. Um, right. And they so can't hide out in the back at the pavilion. There, there is no back of the pavilion. It is okay. an open pavilion. People are coming in from both sides. Uh, mm -hmm. and so okay. it is, there's like, there's nowhere to hide. When you are on shift, you are on shift. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, there's, you know, can come sit in the middle, but mm -hmm. anyone could come up and start talking to you. Okay. Um, which is one of the reasons why I'm like, it's, I've done it and it's super doable to do a full day. Um, and it's a but really great, tired at the end you know, of the it's day. really useful, but yeah, you can get pretty tired and, um, you know, it's usually if you're doing a full day, do a full day when there's enough people that you can be like, all right, I need a second to go grab some food and to like, just yeah. 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 So on that, um, what does the SCA provide or, um, like, do they have, um, does the fair have a section where, uh, like volunteer can hide out? Like, cause like. I'm diabetic and sometimes I have to change my insulin pump and stuff. And I don't want to do that in front of the crowds. Is there like a spot um, for volunteers at the demo? Yeah. So um, there's not so much in terms of like, Oh, like, Hey, here's the volunteer building. Mm -hmm. uh, but just on, um, you know, to the back of our space, there is like the wall of the edge of fair and okay. there is a door in the wall. And so you can kind okay. of hop behind there, take your hat off. You're like off for a Get minute. A breathe. Yeah. Um, yeah. Breathe. But it's, um, you know, it's, that's also where like all of those booths who are close by are also doing it. And so like that's staff space. Okay. Um, and so we don't like to overuse it because mm -hmm. that is really kind of the fair's um, the fair space, and that's where all of the staff will, like park in the back. Mm -hmm. um, and to that point, if if you're not a primary, like that is that some primaries can fit in there, but it's very limited parking. Um, and so, like everyone else is, everyone has to park out in general parking. Okay. Um, okay. And so it's like it's a hike to get to our booth. Um, there's mm -hmm. not a lot of space. The bathrooms are about a football field away for the hard stands. There's some uh, Porta Johns that are a little bit closer, okay. the ground uneven. Um, and so it's just like to be aware that yeah. some, some um, accessibility mm -hmm. uh, concerns that this one is really hard and we don't really have a lot of control over trying to support that more. Okay. Um, so to plan accordingly. If yeah, you plan accordingly. To come. Uh, now, one thing I will say is we cannot have any mundanity showing. Mm -hmm. We do okay. have limited space. We have uh, tablecloths. And so people can sort of store some of that stuff or if somebody like brings a, a wagon, we'll cover that up. But like, there's only so many spaces that you can cover up a wagon right. um, and it can really get out of control. And so like, if you're planning to bring anything more than like a little box and maybe like a little lunch box for your stuff, um, I would reach out to Honorable Lord to Hall and His Excellency Gavin to arrange that to make sure that there's going to be. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that way it's like borrowing a war wagon rather than bringing your own and then like three other people have it. Right. But also yeah. there's not like a wagon that lives at the tent. So like okay. it really is you need to be self-sufficient when you're going to mm -hmm. go. Okay. Uh, um, what kind of, so you're saying hiding mundane stuff. So that means no camp chair or camping chairs. You need to bring um if are there chairs provided so there are a couple of wooden chairs that are out there it's usually like four or five um okay. that are with the the pavilion but if you have one that uh wooden like chair wooden... That moves pretty easily highly recommend that you bring it okay. um yeah so it's and it's that's really like no mundanity is if you need to use your phone, it's like you're in the middle of the pavilion, kind of like hiding it for a second. Mm -hmm. And that is yeah. it. They don't want us kind of just sitting scrolling on phones. Um, you know, for the most part, like we're 
when we had we had a tablet out there for people to put their information in our second year and we like hit it in a box so they're, okay, they're yeah. really really try and um make sure that they are letting it be as immersive as possible uh right. even if there's like some trolls and fairies on staff that are running by like it's mm -hmm. it is those are medieval trolls and fairies and so right yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's the renaissance fairy you gotta you gotta go all in yeah right. absolutely yeah Okay, cool. That's that's good to know. Um, is there a limit to how many people can volunteer for a specific shift? Or could like I bring my entire barony with me? So uh, if if too many people sign up, there uh -huh. uh, you know the the demo runners will probably reach out and be like, thanks, mm -hmm. but like pull it in. Um, right. But we've had some some pretty large days, uh, and one of the things is if a big group volunteers, it does allow for a little bit more rotation throughout yeah. a particular shift. Um, so more volunteers. More volunteers. I will say, you know, we don't mm -hmm. try and like if it's if it's stacked for a weekend, mm -hmm. we would really appreciate if you'd split it between multiple weekends. Um, right we don't want to abuse the awesome gift that the demo that the fair gives us of being able to get in for free and enjoy the fair um because that's a parking spot that, that is, know, yeah. is not close by for a patron mm -hmm. um and so really want to make sure that we are you know the people are coming are coming to the demo and and going to be focused there uh yeah tent doesn't get so crowded with SEA people that other people don't feel like they can come in. So I would say like 10 like, people on a shift is a great number. It can, okay. go, it can go a little bit higher. Uh, yeah. You know, we've had up to 20 and that's reasonable, especially mm -hmm. if they're like fighters, but, uh, but it really starts to get out of control past that. After um, that. Okay. And, you know, if we have, you know, 20 for a shift, but like 25 for a day, because mm -hmm. if we start to have more than that, it starts to look kind of bad that we have so many people on will call. Okay. Yeah. I can, I can see that for sure. Cause then they're like, are you all working or are you all having fun? Right. But we're here so, to work and that's what we want to do. We want to get those because the more we work with it, the more likely we'll get um, newcomers coming to our stuff, you know, the rest of the year too. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's the win-win part of it for the, um for everyone mm -hmm. i think okay cool um so where again can we find more information about the um like volunteering for the fair so again that is off the main onstira homepage. if you mm -hmm. go up to the top there's a button for demos can uh click on that there's a uh you know, at that point, you'll see a lot of the major demos for the kingdom. Sherwood Forest will be right there and they'll take you to the page. Um, but also, if you go to onstior.org slash hospitler slash Sherwood, um, that'll get you to sort of our landing page for Sherwood, where there is a volunteer and a did you find us at Sherwood button. Um, and if you want to get directly there, onstior.org slash hospitler slash Sherwood slash volunteer. Awesome. And there is... Um, I've noticed uh, when I go, you know, like uh, look at the kingdom calendar or whatever on the very first page, there's a button that also says Sherwood Forest on it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming if you click that button, it'll also redirect yeah. you. Yeah. And, it's you know, a great place to to kind of connect to the, uh, you know, demo community is there's an <laughs> SCA at Sherwood Facebook page. Okay, um, cool. That has links to, you know, documents that the fair uses of like, here's our clothing guidelines. Um, yeah. That has, uh, that's, you know, people will use that to be like, hey, I'm on my way for my shift and, and that kind of thing. Um, and, and a lot of that sort of information. So another great place to kind of just connect, ask questions, and be oh, able to get more information yeah. about the fair. And uh, is there a Discord for people who don't use this, um, Facebook? That There's they, not a Discord specifically for the fair, but mm -hmm. if you wanted to ask questions about it, I'd recommend joining the Barony of Bringolots Discord. Okay, um, cool. And if you throw questions in there, a lot of our pretty active members uh, will be able to see that and can direct you and, and give you some advice on that. All right. Thank you so much for uh, 
teaching us about um teaching me and everyone who's watching about uh the sherwood forest um fair demo yeah it's happy to it's a it's a really it's really fun i've really enjoyed every year and also you know the members that we've been able to get from it mm -hmm. uh, and so just want everyone to know about this really cool opportunity uh, it's been amazing kind of talking to people and like, oh yeah, so-and-so, they've been a great addition. I was like, oh yeah, I, I met them at the fair. We, yeah. told them, we told them that there was a group in uh, in San Antonio, the Barony of Bjornsburg, and they, they ended up joining. Um, and so just really excited to have more people join and wanted to give a shout out. There's several groups already, um, you know, Shadowlands and, mm -hmm. and uh, Star and Lock and Hell's Gate, sort of in the the southern region, that have sort of mm. taken on weekends. Oh, um, excellent! You know, kind of leading the charge for those weekends, and really thank everyone who's already signed up uh, to be a part of it. We really appreciate it, and it makes this such a more enjoyable experience for the fair yeah. when more people get to experience it, and we can all kind of do this this job of everyone a hospitaler together. <laughs> Awesome. That's so fantastic. Um, I, I can't wait for it to start. Um, you said it starts uh, March 4th. So pretty quick, um, starting pretty quick, starting pretty soon. Yeah, we have our, our setups going to be this uh, Sunday um, and fair starts the, the weekend after that. So awesome. awesome. Great opportunity. If you're not going to Gulf War, Gulf War pity party at Sherwood. Oh, that's, that's great. Yeah. That's in kingdom too, guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, that's going to be great. Um, I can't wait to see, uh, the season, so to speak for y'all. Um, and maybe even come out and see, uh, vol about volunteering with y'all. Um, yes, yeah, I'll can... come, uh, I'll come see if I can, you know, it's, I know it's pretty far for you, but can see if we can, uh, get some, Get some TikTok footage or, or all that yes. type of stuff and be able yeah, to. Yeah, you guys can take along. over and do yeah. a live stream and <laughs> yeah, give us a, a, a personal tour. I'll make sure you guys can give us that so we That'd can all great. see. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Take us on the parade with it, uh, you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> drag it, like your phone in a dragon or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, Orazio. It's been fantastic. Um, yeah, absolutely. I've had a lot of fun tonight, so thank it's you. Been, it's been a ton of fun, and I look forward to seeing everybody out at Sherwood. All right. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching this live, or not live stream, but this recording of uh, um, Maestro Orazio and I talking about the um, this uh, demo. Uh, I intend to do this um, for other demos as well. Um, including the Namron Medfair demo. Please don't at me about that. <laughs> um, but if you have any other, um, if anyone has any demos that they want to talk about with me, um, please just, you know, sh shoot me a message um, on Facebook um, or send me an email at social slash media at uh, seneschal.onstiora.org. And I will be more than happy to coordinate with you about that. Um, I also want to give a shout out to um, our web minister, Honorable Lady Kofina, because the website that um, with the Sherwood Forest um, demo page that she's created that we've talked about quite a bit tonight is amazing and well deep. Um, it has all the information, both as a new for newcomers and for volunteers. So definitely check that um, page out um, for sure. Yeah. And for other groups that may have, <laughs> demos that they're doing yearly, mm -hmm. big or small, please reach out to me uh, at the Kingdom Hospitaller email yeah. and uh, would love to help get that set up so that those demo opportunities, even if they're not yearly, but you know about it coming up in a couple months, let's get some info on the Onstior homepage. Let's make sure that there's a landing place. We're building a sort of general landing place and make sure that you have uh, some resources to be able to direct people there. We want to make sure that we are able to catch as many of those contacts that we have at these demos as possible. So if you have questions about how you can do that better, I'd love to talk to you. Oh, yeah. And then um, I can always work with uh, Orazio on that as far as like spreading the word out, kind of like mm -hmm. what we're doing tonight. So uh, thank you, everyone. And I'll see you around.
Bye. Thanks, everybody.